by fourth graders. Nothing. Chapter five, the first day bash. I got used to the way Fudge looked without his top front teeth. He looked like a very small first grader. Dr. Brown or Dennis said he'd have to wait until he was six or seven to get his grown-up teeth. I started calling him Fang because when he smiles, all you can see are the top two side teeth next to the big space. So it looks like he has fangs. My mother didn't like that. I want you to stop calling him Fang, she told me. What should I call him, I asked. Farley Drexel? I plain, just plain fudge will be fine, my mother said. What's wrong with Farley Drexel, I asked. How come you named it that if you don't like it? I like it fine, my mother said. So right now, we said we couldn't call him Fudge, not Farley, not Drexel, and not Fang. What's wrong with Fang, I asked. I think it's something. Fang is an insult. Oh, come on, Mom. She doesn't even know who that Fang is. But I know, Peter, and I don't like it. Okay, okay, I promise I'll never call my brother Fang again. Whenever I look at him, I think of my brother saying hat that nobody can stop me from thinking my mind is my own. He just going to be three years old. My brother says he's to have a birthday party with some of his friends. He plays with three other little kids who live in a building. And Jenny welcomes Sam. My mother invited them to Fudge's party. Grandma said she'd come over to help. My father couldn't make it. He had a Saturday business appointment. I wanted to go to Jimmy Fargo's, but my mother said she needed me to supervise the game. These kids were invited from 1 until 2.30. That's only an hour and a half, my mother reminded me. That's not so bad, is it, Peter? I don't know yet, I told her. Ask me later. The kitchen table was set up for the party. The cloth and napkins and paper plates were all cut, all matched. They had pictures of Superman on them. Right before party time, Grandma tried to stand the fudge under his new suit. He was screaming his head off about it. My mother tried to reason with him. It's dreadful, Fudgy. All you have to tell me is you can look like a boy, don't you? Well, she was talking to him. She knew she could have made him look like a boy. But he wouldn't let her put on the suit. She said she'd carry it on until my mother and grandma were both black and blue. Finally, they decided as long as he was in a suit, his feet didn't matter. So he wore his old bedroom slippers. Ralph arrived first. He's really fat. And he isn't even four years old. He doesn't say much either. He grunts and grabs a lot, though. Usually his mouth is stuffed full of something. So the first thing Ralph did was wander into the kitchen. He looked around for something to eat. But Grandma was guarding the place. She kept telling him, no, no, must wait until other children come. Jenny arrived next. She was wearing little white gloves and party shoes. She even carried a pocketbook. Besides that, she had a dirty on dirty jeans and an old sweater. Her mother apologized for her clothes, but said she couldn't do anything with Jenny lately, especially since she had been taking to biting. Why does she bite, I asked, thinking about furniture or toys or stuff like that. She bites people, Jenny's mother said, but you don't have to worry about it unless the feet go through the skin. Otherwise, it's not a big deal. Well, that poor old fudge. She can't even bite back if she hasn't had any food. She looked at Jenny. She couldn't bite anything. It was hard to believe she was a little girl. She was so mad. She was a big girl. But he was crying. It's just a phase he's going through, his mother explained. Ever since he was in the school birthday party, I had to tell him how old he was. And everybody was really proud of him. He's going on such a mom. I walked with his mother and turned over the fudge to see how old he was. So at five, after one, we were ready to begin. We had an eater, a biter, and a crier. I thought the two thirty would never come. I also thought my mother was slightly crazy for dreaming up the party in the first place. Doesn't Fudge have any normal friends, I whispered. There's nothing wrong with Fudge's friends, my mother whispered back. All small children are like that. Grandma got them seated around the kitchen table. She put a party hat on each kid's head. Sam screamed, get it off, get it off. But the others wore their hats and didn't complain. My mother snapped a picture of them with her new camera. Then Grandma turned off the lights and my mother lit the candle on Fudge's cake. They had chocolate frosting and big yellow roses. I led the singing of Happy Birthday. My mother carried the cake across the kitchen to the party table and set it down in front of Fudge. Sam cried, too dark, too dark. So Grandma had to turn on the kitchen lights before Fudge blew out his candles. When he was finished blowing, he reached out and grabbed a rose off his cake. He shoved it into his mouth. Oh, Fudge, my mother said, look what you did. But Grandma said, it's his birthday, he can do whatever he wants. 
So Fudge reached over and grabbed a second rose. I guess Fat Ralph couldn't stand seeing Fudge eat those yellow roses because he grabbed one too. By that time, the cake looked pretty messy. My mother, finally coming to her senses, took the cake away and sliced it up. Each kid got a Dixie cup, a small piece of cake, and some milk. But Jenny hollered, where's my rose? I want one too, because her slice of birthday cake didn't happen to have one. My mother explained that the roses were only decorations, and they weren't enough to go around. Jenny seemed to accept that. But when Grandma stood over to help her open her Dixie, Jenny bit her on the hand. She bit me, Grandma cried. Did it break the skin, my mother asked? No, I don't think so, Grandma said, checking. Good, then it's nothing to worry about, my mother told her. Grandma went into the bedroom to put some medicine on it anyway. She wasn't taking any chances. Ralph was the first one to finish his food. More, 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 he was saying, holding up his empty plate. I don't think you should give him any more, I whispered to my mother. Look how fat he is now. Oh, Peter, this is a party. Let him eat whatever he wants. Okay, I said. Why should I care how fat he gets? My mother served Ralph a second piece of cake. He threw up right after he finished it. Me and Grandma took the kids into the living room while my mother cleaned up the mess. Grandma told Fudge he could open his presents while his friends watched. Jenny bought him a music jack in the box. When he turned the handle around and played Pop Goes the Weasel. When you reach the part of the song about Pop, the top opens and a funny clown comes up. Fudge loved it. He clapped his hands and laughed and laughed. His fans started to scream, no, no more, take it away. He hid his face in his hands and wouldn't look up until Grandma promised to put the jack in the box in another room. Fudge opened Ralph's present next. It was a little wind-up car that ran all over the floor. I kind of liked it myself, and so did Ralph, because he grabbed it away from Fudge and said, Mine! No, Fudge yelled, Mine! When my mother heard the racket, ran in from the kitchen. She explained to Ralph that he had bought the car to Fudge because it was his birthday, but Ralph wouldn't listen. I guess my mother was afraid he might throw up again, and this time on the living room rug, she so she begged Fudge to let Ralph play with the car for a few minutes. But Ralph kept screaming it was his car. So Fudge started to cry. Finally, my mother took the car and went away and said, let's see what Sam brought you. Fudge liked that idea. He forgot about the little car as he ripped the paper and ribbon off Sam's package, which turned out to be a big picture dictionary. The same kind the Yarbys brought me a couple months ago. Fudge got mad when he saw it. No, he yelled. No more book. He threw it across the room. Fudge, that's terrible, my mother said. You mustn't do that to the nice book. No book, Fudge said. Sam cried. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like my present. I want to go home. I want to go home. Grandma tried to comfort Sam while my mother picked up the book. She gathered the wrapping paper and ribbons and cards together. Fudge didn't even look at any of the birthday cards. Oh, well, he can't read, so I guess it doesn't make any difference. Peter, my mother said. Let's start the games now, quick. I checked the time. I hoped the party was almost over, but no. It was only 30, 1.30, still an hour to go. I went to my room where I had blown up a lot of balloons. My mother had the party book, and it says, three years olds like to dance around with balloons. When I got back to the living room, Mom started the record player, and I handed each kid a balloon. But they just stood there looking at me. I thought, either the guy who wrote this party book is crazy, or I am. Show them, Peter, my mother said. Take a balloon and demonstrate. I felt like one of the world's greatest living Biggest living fool dancing around with a balloon. As soon as the kids saw me doing it, they started dancing too. And the more they danced, the more they liked it. Until Jenny's balloon popped. The nearly scared Sam right out of his mind. He stood yelling and crying. Fortunately, I had blown up two dozen balloons. I was hoping they'd dance around the rest of the afternoon. How'd you get the idea of jumping up and down on the furniture? The others liked that too. So instead of dancing with the balloons, that's what they did. And soon they were running from room to room, yelling and laughing. Having a great time. Then the doorbell rang. It was Mrs. Rudder. She lives in the apartment right under us. She wanted to know what was going on. She said it sounded like her ceiling was about to crash in on that for any second. My mother explained that Fudge was having a little birthday party and wouldn't she like to stay for a piece of cake? Sometimes my mother is really clever. So Grandma entertained Mrs. Rudder in the kitchen while forcing the pudding to up and down and making a bowl. It was delivered to Jenny and she said that in the apartment, there were many small bowls and lots of little bowls she was making. But you get one, she said. New bed, big bowl, said the party with her sister on. You won't have a new big boy bed for long if you don't start dancing right, my mother said. Everyone was just so excited to see her in action. 
我们来看一下这条信息如何。然后他非常的懂，他就带我们去转圈。我是专门的，专门的，专门的，就是都不都不喜欢。We're all, we'll all enjoy this one, even if you know it by heart. And if you do know it by heart, well, you can say it together. That's just what Jenny did. And when my mother skipped a page by mistake, Jenny was right there to remind her. If you ask me, my mother felt like biting Jenny by that time. When the story was over, it was two o'clock, and Ralph was sound asleep on the floor. My mother told. Told me to put him on Pudge's new bed while she took the rest of the kids back into the living room. I tried to try, but I couldn't lift Ralph. He must weigh a ton. So let's just keep him on the floor. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to leave that there. He didn't remember that. He didn't remember that. So I didn't do it. Now, I'm going to do it. 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 I don't know what to do with that anymore. Jibble, Fudge, how old are you? Jibble, jibble, jibble. I guess him, him and Jenny like the way that sounded because they said jibble, 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 even though they didn't know what they were talking about. All right, I said. I'll show you jibble. But you've got to promise to be very quiet. You mustn't make a sound. You might scare him, okay? He all said, okay. My mother went and took him in the cat with Jenny and Mrs. Jenny. I went into my room and came back to my bedroom. I put my finger over my lips so that my forehead was flat and I said, I work. At first, nobody said a word. I put my head on my pillow. I didn't say anything and stayed out of the house. Oh, you turtle, Jenny said. Yeah, it was a turtle, my turtle, Jenny replied to her. Do you see, Fudge whispered? They can all see, I told Fudge. Nice turtle, said Jenny said. I wanted to go outside, he wasn't afraid this time. What is Jenny doing to Jenny? Do you? He doesn't do anything, said Big smile on her face. Next thing I know, there was a pillow on the bed. Mama, how I come back? My mother grabbed him from the kitchen. She said, Peter, what is it? What did Jenny do? I said, What is that? My mother looked at him at her. He made on the floor, I said, and on purpose. Oh, Jenny, my mother told you not. Did too, Jenny said. That was very naughty, my mother told her. You come with me. She scooped up Jenny and carried her into the bathroom. After that, Mom mopped up the puddle. Finally, the doorbell rang. It was 2.30. The party was over. I could hardly believe it. I was beginning to think it would never end. First, Ralph's mother came. She had to wake him up to get him out of there for a minute. This is she couldn't carry him. Next, Jenny's mother came. Mom gave her Jenny's wet pants and a baggie. It was all she had to do. Jenny's mother was funny and got up. Sam's mother came last, but he didn't want to go home. I don't get used to us. I guess it was like she said, Can I party more? Another time, his mother said, dragging him out of the apartment by the arm. My mother flopped down on her shirt, grabbed my bra, her two aspirins, and glass of water. Here, dear, she said, maybe these will help. My mother swallowed the pills. She held her head. Three is kind of young for a party, I told my mother. Peter Warren Hatcher, my mother began. Yes, I asked. You are absolutely right. I flopped down next to my mother. She put her arm around me. Then we both watched Fudge work his new jacket in the box. Later, when my father came home, he said, How did Fudge's parties go? My mother and I looked at each other and we laughed. So, you are starting a new summer for English. You are still going to finish up your German and stuff, work on the folder. And what you have is Chart to help you keep track of it. Each line and number. We're going to do a list of the folders. And you're going to complete one. It doesn't matter if you start in the beginning or maybe the end of that one. So complete one of these. And then I'm going to email your full email. 
with a question that I want you to email me back and answer. Matt, you, I will make a video and we can talk about it in our Zoom meeting. So we are starting geometry. We are relating solids and plane figures. And then I broke down IXL to 20 minutes a day. So if you today, then you have to add these together. So for now, we do a couple of these. So up here in the flame, an edge, the line segment is simply taken. So face is the flat surface. And the vertex is center of the pyramid of the head. Then they have the curved surfaces, sphere, corners, or cone. Flat surface, a cube, triangular prism, square pyramid, or rectangular prism. So here's a square pyramid. If you add cone, We have a cube or a circle, a cylinder, a sphere, a rectangular prism, So on this, you have to decide what is the greatest number of and the number of edges. And they have the flat surfaces. So we have rectangular and a prism. May I think of a pyramid? Longer on some sides, shorter on the other. So, number of faces. So, we'll go back up here. We have the flat surface of solid figures. So, let's see. Got one, right there, two, and three, four, five, six. So, let's see what the pyramid Six faces and the edge, the edge is where the right segment is two faces in. So we have one, two, three, four. On the same side, they're going to have four more. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, edges. And left of vertically. And the vertex is center of the pyramid of the head. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the shape of the faces. So shape of the face. They're not all the same size. And then on to my last four, the cube, the triangular prism, and a 
escuela, la madre. And then today you also have one and do that, and then on this one, these are common things you can find around your house. The name, what's the name of the child? One of these clouds is like a future. Going on here and around, and let's say a cylinder, right cylinder, down below. The cloud, no flat cloud. Yeah. And the cereal box, huh? That's just where you can have cereal. So, the longer on some side, the more cereal you have. And the other goes on. That would be math, okay? And for today, you're going to work on social studies. So you should have this packet. And I broke it down. I know this looks like a lot, but the page is a lot bigger. Let me open that. First thing it talks about Montana. And you should have this as well. So you're going to read from that. Let's go up here. Four pages about Montana. And in those four pages, it'll tell you what the state is, what the state is named, what the state bird, what the state flower. And tell me one interesting thing about the state. I know there's a couple of different things, but you have to tell me. And today, you need to work. Do not learn any of this. And theology. So these should have stayed on your review of the things you have. You are going to read the primary. So read this. Just have one today. But it talks about. Holy week. And then you're going to answer some questions about what you read. So it might be helpful if you can think about it. So go to file, the file, and then you can go ahead and read it. So we'll go back, read through it, and see. Make sure you look. She says a lot of words, the eye, the day, and the day. And then there are a lot of other ones that are in there that you might want to look at. And that is what you should be working on today. If you have any questions, we can talk about it during the Zoom meeting later. Or send me an email. I would be happy to help.